So today's wine question, and I think it's a very timely question, comes to us from Brian. And Brian asks, when do you decant a wine and why? Like, so why would you ever want to decant a wine? I know we all have seen those gorgeous, very intricate um, uh, decanters going by in restaurants and wondered like, what the heck is that thing for? Is it all for show or does it actually do something? And there's actually two reasons you want to um, decant a wine. The first one is when a wine is old, because as wines age, you know, basically it's a kind of like a little chemistry experiment going on in that bottle over time. But as wines age, especially red wines, the tannins in red wine bind up with other molecules in that bottle and they precipitate out of solution and fall to the bottom of the bottle. So I think you've all, a lot of people who have been fans of wine for a long time, you pick up the bottle, you know, if it's generally around seven years or older and you look at the bottom and there's like kind of this grainy, grainy stuff that's called sediment, right? So that's the result of these tannins kind of, you know, they've done their thing and they're kind of old and they're gonna kind of go down to the bottom of the, of the bottle and sleep, they've done their thing. So tannins are great and they're a normal byproduct of aging. However, you don't necessarily want to drink the tannins when you, or drink the sediment when you drink the wine. So you really need to separate the wine from the tannin. Now, if you're doing this at a restaurant, they'll have that all figured out for you. However, if you have a bottle like that at home, ideally, if it's a bottle that's resting on its side, you wanna stand it upright for one to two days to let all of that sediment really fall to the bottom of the bottle. And then when you're ready to open it, you want to have a handy decanter ready. This is one of my favorites. It's the Riedel Duck. And I especially like it for older wines because as you are pouring the bottle into the decanter, and again, you're essentially decanting it off of its sediment, you can easily see when the tannins or the sediment, why do I keep calling them tannins? when the sediment starts to creep up into the neck of the bottle because you don't want any sediment making it into um, the, your decanter. So again, it lets you do that easily. In the days of yore, they used to put a candle under it to kind of light, uh, illuminate the neck so you could really see. But I have found that the flashlight on your iPhone works just as well. Just turn it on and flip it upside down so the light's shining up. And you can really see when the sediment starts to creep in so you stop pouring then. So then you simply, you know, put the bottle over here and you enjoy the beautiful aged wine, red wine, that's in your decanter. So that is the first incident that you would decant a wine and why you would decant it. The second reason is actually a reason you're probably going to encounter a lot more often. And that's if you have, say, a very youthful, full-bodied red wine. Say you have a Syrah or a Cabernet Sauvignon that's, gosh, one to five years after release and you're drinking it and with each sip, it's stripping all the moisture out of your mouth and probably stripping a lot of the enamel off your teeth. And it's just not, some people love that, but a lot of people, you know, it can be a little much. For instance, like I am not a huge fan of the, the crazy, you know, scary tannins doing that. So what's a way that you can instantly tame those tannins and really help the wine open up while decanting it? And it's kind of the opposite. Whereas when you have an old wine, um, decanting is more of a delicate process. When you have a very youthful tannic red, like a youthful Cabernet Sauvignon, um, you kind of want to dump it upside down into the decanter to really let that air infuse in. Because the more air that infuses into that wine, the better it's gonna taste. I remember the first time Steve and I went to California, I, we were eating at Trevigne and, and the, the sommelier brought over, you know, a youthful red wine and a decanter and he just kind of turned that thing upside down and set it in the decanter and it went glug, 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 glug. We were like, oh my God, is that is that how it's supposed to go? But it did. You really want the infusion to happen, uh, the oxygen into the wine because that's what mellows out those tannins and makes them so incredibly delicious. So definitely want to do that with your youthful red wines and 
You can also do that with, um, with your fuller bodied white wines too. If you have, for instance, uh, white burgundy or Chateauneuf de Pot Blanc, I love to do that with, or um, even a, a fuller bodied California Chardonnay, you can do that. And, and it's fun to really notice the difference before and after you decant it because it definitely, definitely makes a difference. Now, if you don't have a decanter on hand, you, there are options, you've got options, don't panic. Uh, first and foremost, you could always use a nice flower vase. Uh, we've been known to do this at friends' homes, but I will say you want to keep track of what's going into the flower vase and how many times your glass has been refilled with that flower vase because it can get a little out of hand. I'm just going to warn you right now. So you can use a flower vase or if you want to try something really fun, if you're having people over and it's a fun crowd, because this works, you can take that wine, and I would never do this with an older wine, but with a youthful red wine, get out your blender, pour the, your wine in the blender and blend it up because that infusion of oxygen really, really works. I'm gonna link it up actually in the comments below or in the notes below this video. I have a video where I did that a year or so ago and it works, I'm just saying. But so if you have a fun crowd and you want to try something new, you know, your sommelier friend Stephanie told you that you could do this and and real and and watch how it really makes a difference. Pour everyone a little bit before and after and have them compare and it's it's a lot of fun. And if you don't want to commit to a whole bottle and you just want a glass, I'm not a big fan of wine gadgets, but I think everyone, especially if you are a red wine lover, you gotta have a Venturi, because these work. Basically, you pour the wine in here and it infuses it with oxygen as it's being poured into your glass. You can even um, insert this into the neck of some decanters. You can't really do it with the duck, because but I have another one that you um, pour the wine in the top, you can put this in and, um, and it'll kind of have a double effect. And it, it's fun and it really works. So if you wanna mellow out that wine, really help it open up and really make it more enjoyable and make it a more enjoyable and interesting experience for you and your guests, I highly recommend uh, decanting a wine the next time you encounter, obviously a youthful red wine with lots of tannin, or, you know, if you have an older red wine, you know, now is the time, there's no better time like the present to go into your stash of wine you might be holding on to and you know enjoy some of those older bottles because that's because wine has a shelf life you know it doesn't age forever and you don't want to miss that t at that point at which it's at its best so i highly advise you to go sneak a peek in there and see what you can um maybe practice your decanting skills on okay so thanks to brian for asking that question and thanks to all of you for tuning in um let me see if i can see who's tuning in right now oh hey tom hey guys it's a little hard to see my screen is so small uh let's see i can see tom has a question is there any truth to swirling a red wine for 60 seconds equals to letting bottles sit for an hour to breathe I don't know the exact equivalent or if you can scientifically, you know, make it equivalent like that, but you're on the right track. Absolutely swirling your wine in the glass. If you don't have a flower vase, a blender, a decanter or a venturi, swirling a red wine in your glass will absolutely have the same effect. It's just going to take a little longer, but you're right. Keep swirling, 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 and it will mellow out the wine over time. So I hope that kind of clarifies things. So yeah, if you're really left in the lurch um, and you've got only your glass and you, I would just, yeah, keep swirling that glass until you're happy with it. And then, yeah, and then enjoy, okay? So thanks to those of you who tuned in. If you uh, know a friend who might be interested in this information or might benefit from it, uh, feel free to tag them below. And again, if you have any questions, just please put them in the comments section below or send me a private message and I will get to them as soon as I can. So again, happy first week of fall. Um, I hope you guys have a glass um, of wine poured and are enjoying it. And again, I hope you enjoy the rest of your first week of fall. And I look forward to seeing you for next week's Q&A Wine Wednesday. I think I need to come up with a theme song. 
that you have any ideas, bring them on, okay? So take care and I'll see you soon. Cheers.